Thank you, Madam. Good afternoon to all. We are indeed fortunate to have Sri T. Mohan Rao, Outstanding Scientist and Director GTRE as the Chairman of this technical session on propulsion. Sri T. Mohan Rao sir joined DRDO in 1971 and worked in various capacities and acquired vast experience in gas turbine design, manufacturing, testing and project management. He has been the director of GTRE since 2006. As we know, GTRE is the premier Indian research establishment dedicated for developing aerogas turbine engines for military applications. I am sure that nobody can fully describe the achievements made by this eminent scientist in few words. The progress achieved by GTRE illustrates his contributions. Under his able leadership, GTRE was has been has developed a Kaveri engine and the Kavanaugh engine had its first flight during November 2010 on IL-76 platform at JFRI, Russia. He made India proud by successfully carrying out the first flight of indigenously designed and developed a fighter class engine. Further, he diversified the activities of GTRE, making it as a major gas turbine engine testing center and with his initiatives, now GTRE has got capabilities in rapid prototype manufacturing of engine components, engine design, development and testing. GTRE is also engaged in design and development of marine gas turbine engines. Sri Mohan Rao sir published many scientific papers in national and international journals and conferences. Recognizing his contributions, several awards have been conferred on him. Dr. Moon got the National Award for Outstanding Contributions in Aerospace Technologies, Award of Excellence by All India Manufacturers Association, Indian Engineer National Award by the Institution of Engineers of India for his contribution to aerospace engineering and uh, engineering are a few of the awards to mention. He is currently heading the Aeronautical Society of India Bangalore Chapter as its chairman. It is my proud privilege to request Sri Mohan Rao sir to chair this session and introduce the eminent speakers of this session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Marjit. Dobradhen, Paruski, good afternoon in English. Uh, we have four speakers to start with in uh, Russian, so I thought we'll introduce my Russian speaker first. And um, I'm really honored to be amongst uh, stalwarts of uh, propulsion uh, community. And uh, propulsion is always, uh, people say, in the belly. So it's never seen outside. But then the, it's the belly which uh, gives the energy to the legs and hands or the wings of the aircraft. So, so it, it always has its importance, the propelling power, the motive power for the aircraft. So it's really uh, apt to have a session immediately uh, post um, tea because had it been post lunch people would have been with heavy belly would have really gone to deep sleep and there's no interaction at all so i'm happy that this has conferred uh, at this uh, point of time our uh, first speaker is uh, dr alexander uh, shergen head propulsion systems aerodynamic department of uh, sagi it is uh, spelled like this actually it is sagi t s a g i like our tsunami tsa in Russian, the SA is TS is in a single letter. That's the beauty of Russian. And um, at the actual the SAGI Central Aero Hydrodynamic Institute, named after Professor N. E. Zukovsky in the town of Zukovsky, Moscow, Moscow region, Russia. And um, Dr. Alexander is a Russian national. He's currently working as head of the Propulsion Systems, Aerodynamics Department of Central Hydro Aero Hydrodynamic Institute, named after Professor in the Zukovsky, Sagi in Russia. In Russia, they have a culture of naming every institute, please come. Every institute after the scientist who has uh, contributed to the institute, and that name is permanent. There's a great culture in Russia, I probably should uh, emulate. And uh, he's going to talk about intake uh, compression in air breathing, compressorless propulsion systems at start and unstart conditions. In fact, uh, Sagi is a great institute where a lot of uh, 
aerodynamic studies are made, a lot of internal tests are made, for intake, exhaust, and the serpentine intakes, and a lot of other uh, um, uh, external aerodynamics. It's the, one of the greatest institutes of Russia. And uh, the SAGI <coughs> general director, the chief executive officer, what we call, is a member of the Defense Council for all the aeronautical applications. So they really assume a lot of importance in Russia. So I request uh, Dr. Alexander to take on this presentation. Please. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I can try to start uh, my report. Uh, once again, my name is. Uh -huh. it's, is it better? Thank you very much. Uh, once again, my name is Alexander Chivagin. Uh, I am from uh, Tsagi, head of propulsion system. Department, I will try to uh, present you uh, my presentation. The name is Intake Compression and uh, Compressor OS, Air Basin Propulsion System at Start and Start Condition. It means uh, RMG uh, type of uh, propulsion system, not more. Uh, thank, uh, thanks a lot for invitation to this uh, seminar. Very interesting for us to participate in this uh, seminar and, of course, to cooperate with our uh, Indian uh, partners, uh, especially on uh, hypersonic technology, uh, high-speed vehicle, and uh, so on. The subject of uh, our interest are uh, uh, hypersonic vehicles for future flight uh, tests. Uh, you know that the key moment uh, for hypersonic flight is a propulsion system with scrambled. Uh, our uh, activity is uh, focused on uh, study of uh, dual mode uh, scrambled for uh, wide, wide uh, range uh, Mach number. Uh, you know that uh, that ideal uh, rounded uh, working cycle consists of three parts. Uh, compression uh, by uh, for body and uh, intake, combustion or fuel and expansion is uh, in a nozzle. Each component, of course, give, uh, gives own individual input uh, to total efficiency of a propulsion system. For this reason, of course, we should uh, study separately or together uh, the gas dynamic of each uh, components. Thank you. Uh, gas dynamic by using calculation or wind tunnel uh, test. I would like to uh, show some uh, several tubes and test tricks uh, at SAGI, which involve to investigation of uh, uh, process in uh, propulsion system. First of all, uh, the tube uh, SVS2 for uh, Mach number up to four, for a test of uh, intake, intake models. And a second uh, uh, supersonic or hypersonic tube is T116 at Tsagi for Mach number up to 10, up to 10. Meaningful discussion of uh, intake performances, of course, must include some trouble, no? must include uh, pressure uh, recovery characterization, intake uh, capability or how much uh, compression is performed, start and st start condition, flow distortion at uh, entrance of uh, engine, range of stable operation, and so on. A lot of uh, questions. After that, uh, the investigation uh, after that investigation, we can discuss about intake efficiency or what level of thrust uh, economic uh, characteristic does the propulsion system uh, generate during the compression and combustion. Uh, next uh, picture, <coughs> supersonic test trick uh, for direct connect test of uh, combustors. Uh, this test trick ensures maximum approach of uh, combustor test to real operating uh, condition. 
In parallel, we are using uh, so-called electronic uh, wind tunnel technology for numerical sim simulation of working process in order to understand uh, the uh, futures of the gas dynamic and uh, combustion. Uh, you can, maybe you can see uh, some stages of ignition of fuel and uh, flame propagation uh, in combustor. Very interesting and used useful results for understanding of physics of flow. And uh, finally, I would like to show hypersonic uh, wind tunnel for frigid test of uh, ramjet or scramjet. Uh, mm, of, co of course, I mean the test of noble engine. Uh, can consist, <laughs> sorry, uh, can consist of three parts, uh, intake, maybe four body, combustor and uh, nozzle. Uh, this wind tunnel is used for final test in order to define overall efficiency of the engine, uh, stable operation of uh, uh, range, uh, reliability of heat supply system, balance of thrust and drag and uh, so on. By using our uh, measurement, uh, uh, balance measurements, uh, we can estimate so-called thrust increment. It means actually the difference between uh, thrust and drag of the vehicle or, or engine. <coughs> After preliminary introduction, I would like to come back to my uh, main uh, purpose of my report, intake compression in ramjet type propulsion system. You see that according to test results and uh, our and your calculation, we have very big decrease of uh, uh, specific impulse at high uh, Mach number. If uh, integrated engine works at wide range of Mach number. Uh, the questions are, how does intake uh, capability or comp uh, compression uh, affect on engine efficiency? The second one, how can we improve uh, uh, the compression in terms of compression ratio if uh, required? Uh, we have considered two uh, cases. Uh, first case is a uh, poor scramjet with Buziman type intake. intake. We have considered the influence of uh, relative intake uh, throughout area on engine thrust coefficient. Uh, compression ratio is, uh, you know, opposite value of relative throughout area. You see that we have very strong uh, dependence of thrust, thrust on uh, intake throughout area. Good thrust can be produced only at small uh, throughout of intake and uh, the increase uh, of the compression ratio from 3 uh, up to 10 gives uh, a rise of thrust in two, in two uh, times. Very big influence. Another example, dual mode uh, scramjet, Mach number 6, the same uh, results. The biggest uh, specific impulse and thrust coefficients is uh, provided at small intake throughout area. The increase of compression ratio provides uh, the rise of impulse and thrust up to uh, approximately uh, 40, 14 uh, percent, 40 percent. Why? What is the question? Why? <coughs> uh, this results can be explained by consideration of pressure uh, uh, distribution along the flow path in the dual mode uh, ramjet. You see that uh, at low relative throat area, we have more higher pressure in the duct during combustion. More pressure, of course, means more thrust of engine. But uh, I have some mistake. Uh, not right 0 0.12, but uh, more right uh, 0 0.20. <coughs> more, uh, 
main conclusion from uh, previous slide, uh, from our consideration, for ramjet type propulsion system, it is very useful to improve compression to get good engine performances. But we have uh, some uh, problem. Uh, we have considered only the ideal uh, case without taking into account the problem of starting of the intake. If we have, we have small throat and correspondingly uh, big uh, compression ratio, we cannot uh, not provide the flow starting due to the presence of the bow shock. Bow shock for a low speed uh, uh, intake for, uh, for example, for intake uh, like pitot. And for high speed to dimensional uh, intake, we, uh, we have very big uh, separation zone at entry uh, plane. This is a very big uh, problem. There is a very big uh, gap between two curves. Uh, between required compression ratio for self-starting of the intake with fixed geometry, uh, usually described by Kantarovitz uh, limits, and ideal isentropic uh, compression. How to improve uh, the uh, compression uh, ratio? Of course, first uh, way to use variable geometry of intake. Uh, for example, you can see uh, two possible variants. On the uh, uh, first variant, the Indian hypersonic uh, vehicle demonstrator with movable uh, coal. And second one, the French intake model for uh, scramjet made by uh, MBDA and Onera. The second uh, possible way to to change the geometry is a lateral movement of the ramps of center body. Very good way for uh, solving start problem, but, but it does uh, require complex, very complex system for variance area ratio. And of course, we have, have interest increase of it. Suitable times for uh, consideration for uh, real vehicle. Uh, in uh, our institute, uh, some time ago, we have tried to find out more simple uh, technical decision for fixed uh, geometry intakes. Uh, key moment in the uh, in a new scheme is using uh, additional uh, additional internal internal compression, uh, some uh, special sets. Uh, in order to provide more uh, high level of uh, compression in comparison with Kantorovitz uh, uh, limit. <coughs> Why does it possible uh, to use additional compressor in the duct? Uh, the reason is that, that according uh, our calculation, the flow before start at the presence of the very large uh, separation at entry plane, the Mach number is uh, in the rear rear part, in the second uh, plane of the intake, is much uh, more bigger than one, approximately two, maybe sometimes at uh, very high uh, Mach number, approximately three. It uh, gives us good opportunity to to improve to improve uh, compression uh, ratio. It means uh, that we can provide additional compression in the rear part of the throat. On the base of test and calculation, we have uh, defined the uh, permissible decrease of the throat area up to 50%. Uh, 50%. So, in this case, we have two places for uh, compression. In the forward, forward part of the intake uh, duct, uh, defined according Kantarovitz uh, limits, like conventional intake, and uh, in the rear uh, rear part of the duct, uh, 
uh, after separation zone. The sum of the, con uh, of the uh, conventional compression plus uh, additional uh, compression give us the rise of the final uh, compression ratio. Next picture, sorry. Uh, so of the compression ratio up to uh, two times. Well, it's your opinion. But unfortunately, uh, made some special <laughs> slide with our conclusion, but I try to you. First, uh, intake compression is a very important part for optimization of a ramjet type of propulsion system. Second, rise of the compression ratio gives the essential improvement of engine performances. Third, uh, ramjet intake additional compression was developed and tested at our institute. And finally, using of uh, intake with uh, such kind of additional internal compression can give uh, us the increase of compression ratio up to two times in comparison with conventional uh, intake. Thank you very much. No question, maybe next time. <laughs> yep, probably are, are quite uh, clear, I guess. I'm, I'm saying they're all quite awake, so either only two reasons for not questioning, either they're sleeping or they're awake, they understood. Yeah, so you're the right. second part is right, I guess. <laughs> uh, Once yeah. again, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Dr. Alexander. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the organizers, uh, may I now request Yeah, I would like to briefly summarize this talk. Uh, in a gas turbine engine, um, most difficult part is the compressor, the air intake, which is the desolating flow. You are working against the nature. So the topic also is uh, as tough as that. Um, see, uh, the thrust generated uh, for a compressionless propulsion uh, system depends on the efficient combustion. The combustion efficiency and the proper combustion depends on the pressure, mass flow rate, and temperature at the beginning of the compressor, so that there onwards the combustion process starts. Now, the good news should be known from the air intake uh, on the compressor characteristics that water is going to deliver to the compressor, um, to the combustor. Um, depending upon the air intake, especially in this case, you know, it has got almost like a three pressure ratio uh, compressor, uh, supersonic uh, Mach number is available. But then, until you know the good news of your design through your testing, it's too late for you to know during the actual uh, engine testing. Therefore, it's all the more critical that the air intake uh, characteristics to be well known, the pressure recovery, the shock factors, and the pressure pattern, all these things should be known well ahead before we actually put it on the engine. Therefore, testing of the intake uh, and then knowing its characteristics is a very critical uh, requirement for a scramjet and ramjet engines, as also for a gas turbine engine. And, um, Dr. Alexander has presented a great detail and a highly informative talk, unless, unlike the other talks, what you see, where there are general blah, blah, and then a lot more talk than the actual material on the uh, board, what we have been observing. I don't have to emphasize that. But here, there's more on the board and more for you to observe than what is, what is trying to explain. And uh, I expect more appreciation from, them, from all the audience because being a Russian, without a translator's assistance, you could talk to you in your language, giving all the technological uh, challenges and uh, contributions made by him and made by the institute. Thank you very much. Thank you. May I request the director to hand over a minute to Dr. Alexander Shogun.